Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a book unhaul. It's why my shelves are looking a little sparse in a few places, but I actually decided that I would periodically take books into my local used bookstores and then I would keep track of the ones I took in and then I would update you on how much store credit my wonderful local used bookstores have given us. So if you are ever in Arizona, I highly recommend checking out Bookman's and Changing Hands. Changing Hands actually is a bookstore that you can line up with your Libro FM account as well as your bookshop.org account. So if any of you would like to support that bookstore, it is wonderful. I'll have both of those websites linked down below. Either way, I don't have a lot of the unhaul books because I've already taken them in, but that means I get to tell you how much store credit we got. I do have a few left that we're hoping to take in tonight if we can, and then I'll let you know how much I get from those. But either way, there are a lot of books that I've gotten rid of recently, so let's jump into it. The first one on the list is not one that I took in because I didn't like it. I actually took this in because my edition was the book of the month edition, and that would be These Violent Delights. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling that takes place in roughly 1920s Shanghai. And it was very interesting. I thought it was going to be a little more romance heavy, just based on the fact that it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling. It wasn't that romance heavy actually. And I thought it was a lot of focus more on the gangs. So it had that West Side Story kind of feel to it, but the setting and all of the little things that went into the culture of all these different groups within Shanghai was really fascinating. So I did really enjoy it. I am interested in the sequel, but as a result, I am one of those stupid people that, you're not stupid if you're like this, I just have a tendency to make fun of myself. But yeah, I am one of those people that likes my books to match in size and the book of the month edition is not the same size as the regular edition. And since I'm interested in the sequel, I decided to take the book of the month edition in so that I can repurchase the regular one and then get the sequel. And I tell myself that this is helping the author. Next up, we have the book Atomic Habits. I am trying to read a little bit more nonfiction. This is a self-help kind of book that's all about how to maximize your schedule, be more efficient, have little changes in your life that can have big results. And I'm always trying to do that anyway. I'm constantly looking at my schedule and trying to assess how I can be a more efficient person. So there were aspects of this book that were, I think, very accurate, but a lot of it was information that I already knew. There were a few things that I thought were valuable to take in. I'm not trying to discredit the things in this book and say like, mm, I know how to tell you to be productive better than this person. <laughs> I just don't know how much I'm gonna wanna go back and reference it again. I think I'm aware of a lot of the information. So somebody else can benefit from it. Next up, we have Ruin of Kings. So this was actually one of the buddy reads this year and there's a whole live show. If you're interested in watching it, I'll have it linked. But I was not so much a fan of this one. I think that if you like stories that are told in an unconventional way that this one would be appealing. So the way this one works is you have at the beginning, the main character is in a prison cell and the person who is his prison guard, if you will, they're trying to insist that he tell them their life story. And he was like, I don't want to. And they're like, fine, I will. And he's like, oh, fine, I will. So he starts to tell his life story from a certain point. And then the other person's like, oh, you should start from a different point. And so you have them telling his life story at two different points of his life. And they are, not, they're going forward. So they're eventually the one that's further back meets the one that the other character started at. And then sometimes you go sort of kind of to present day here and there, but then there's, <laughs> then there's footnotes of another person that tells you things within the other point of views. It's an interesting approach. And I actually didn't hate the approach. I just didn't really like the story or the characters. There was a lot going on and I, I just, it, it wasn't for me. Next up is a book that I thought about keeping, but ultimately I was like, yeah, I don't care. I don't, I don't want to pick it back up. And that would be The Nightingale. So this is a historical fiction that's very well known. And it's about these two sisters during World War II. I started it around the holidays and then I DNF'd it. And I thought about picking it back up, but decided I, I don't want to. I did, I was not liking most of what I'd read. And I just, I like historical fiction. There's a lot of historical fiction about World War II. I figure, you know, I'd rather just pick up some of those. The next two, 
so I thought I was gonna love Jade City. I thought I was gonna love Jade City. It sounded so my thing. It is a kind of urban fantasy, but it doesn't take place in our world. It takes place in a fantasy world, but it is more modern than your typical fantasy story. And it follows these different gangs. And you actually only follow characters from one gang, but they interact with and are kind of up against another gang. And it's very much almost like a character study of these different characters within this family. And I just didn't like any of the characters. I didn't like them at all. I thought that they were a little hypocritical and sometimes they would do things and I feel like they would almost have excuses for why they would not do certain things and then other things they were like, well, I have to do this. And I just found that I do like characters that are very gray but I didn't like these ones. It just wasn't for me. And because I thought I was gonna love it, I also had Jade War and I, I took them both in. Next up is a book that I did quite enjoy. That would be The Knife of Never Letting Go. I took in the copy I had because for Christmas, I had asked on my Christmas list for the trilogy and my husband got me the trilogy, but he got me a box set. It's down there and it's different sizes and so, Actually, I don't think it was a box set. I think he got me books two and three initially, and then he didn't realize they were a different size than the one I had in a different edition, and then so he went back and bought, bought me book one, and then so I took in the copy I had of book one. Next up, I took in Foundry Side. So this is one where I did not love this book, but I did enjoy the ending enough where I was considering picking up Shorefall, its sequel. Most of you know that this book is very much its magic system that people talk about. It's a very interesting magic system that has to do with essentially being able to kind of convince objects that they are supposed to serve a different purpose to an extent. And I thought that the magic system was fascinating and the setting was really cool, but I I didn't really like any of the characters and I thought that the book for me personally it felt like it couldn't quite decide if it wanted to be really gritty and violent or if it wanted to be really cheeky and funny and that's not to say you can't have both of course you can have both but this particular one I normally love when it's a combo and this one that combo just didn't quite work I, the balance wasn't quite my taste next up would be the book Mask of Shadows this is one that I DNF'd rather quickly because right away I could tell that the writing style was a little more youthful than what I was wanting. And I'm not opposed to reading middle grade books and I obviously really enjoy a lot of young adult, which is what this is. But every now and then there are just some books that the writing style just doesn't click and it can be a little young for you. I think it's a terrible example, but it's almost like the way, you know, I enjoy the movie Tangled, but I don't know that I really wanna go back and watch Barney or like Teletubbies or something. And I, I'm not saying that this book is Teletubbies. I just mean things can be for a younger audience and you can enjoy some and not others. I actually had taken all of those in together and we got roughly $45 in store credits. The next three we took in on a different trip. The first one would be Spinning Silver, the paperback edition, which I very much liked, but I ended up finding a hardback edition also at a local used bookstore alongside a copy of Best Serve Cold. So I love floppy paperbacks. They're my favorite kind of format of a book. And so I went ahead and got the floppy paperback of that story because I really liked it. And my friend Leanna is actually the one that gifted me that copy of Best of Cold that I had been reading from. And I double checked with her. I was like, hey, do you want this back or is it cool if I take it in? And she was like, I don't care. Yeah, it's yours now. Take it in. The last one from this second trip would be The Beautiful by Renee Adier, which I've actually mentioned, I'm pretty sure, in an unhaul in the past. I was originally going to take this one in and then my friend actually liked this book and so I gave it to her and then she picked up the sequel and didn't really like the sequel. So she's like, here, you can have this one back. For those three books, I believe we got roughly 14 or $15 in store credit. The last three I'm going to mention are books that I still have with me that I'm hoping to take in today. And the first one is one that I, I never do this. I never take in books that I haven't at least tried, but this one, I've heard enough of you have told me and enough reviews 
I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like it. Plus, I've heard that a lot of people aren't pleased with where the series goes. They think that the quality goes down a little bit. And obviously, I can't really comment on that because I haven't read it. But the book would be The Warded Man, or I believe in some countries it sold as The Painted Man. I've just seen, and, I, and I've seen also the author comment on this criticism, but a lot of people have commented on the fact that there is a lot of sexual assault and those sorts of things in this book. I'm not at all opposed to that content being in books and the effects of that being examined in books. In fact, I think it can be a very powerful thing, but it depends on how it is executed. And I don't know if from what I have seen that it is going to be executed in a way that I'm going to be fond of. The next one, like Ruin of Kings, was actually a buddy read. Kind of uh, the first two buddy reads of the year were not my favorites. And that would be Legendborn. So there are so many aspects of this book that I thought were really well done. I thought the examination of a lot of I guess you could say the commentary on a lot of things was really well done. I thought the exploration of grief with the main character was really well done and the magic systems were really interesting. But a little bit, I felt that there were a lot of things in this one book and I'm not opposed to there being a lot of things, but it kind of took away a little bit from some of those more hard hitting powerful moments in that I wanted to spend more time with those things and sometimes we were spending a lot of time having the magic explained to the main character, and then we're starting to kind of grasp what's going on, and then a new thing kind of is explained to the character. And the timeline of the book was something that was really hard for me to get out of my head, because the timeline, it takes place in a really short amount of time. Our character is introduced to magical things and just goes with it immediately. And that's always something that's gonna pull me out of the story a little bit, because I'm thinking, how the heck are you just accepting that magic exists so quickly? And then it keeps moving quickly and relationships with other people move really quickly and people are ride or die really quickly. And so that aspect of the story definitely was something I didn't love and it made it really hard for me to feel what the character was feeling because I felt like we never stopped to actually feel things, if that makes sense. And when we did, it was really good, but it wasn't, it was hardly ever there. So I still think that it's definitely a book worth checking out, but I just, it was just, I, I really wondered if I was interested in the sequel and I think I would rather wait and see what this author puts out next. The last one would be Wings of Ebony. This is a newer release and I actually did a video recently where I discussed this a little bit more. Any videos I have discussing these books further, I'll have them linked. But this particular one, I did just go into detail about it so I don't wanna be too repetitive. But basically this character, the main character partially, the story takes place with her in Houston, Texas, which is in the United States, and then partially takes place in this magical place that nobody knows about, but our main character's father is actually from this magical place. And there is, similarly to Legendborn, a lot of commentary on American society. Both of them are more modern. As a result, the commentary is obviously very personal and it's things that a lot of people can relate to or reflect on and think about. And I think that those aspects were done really well. For me, what was difficult with this book was the fantasy elements of the story felt like they didn't get a lot of time to develop. And I actually think one of two things would have made it fit my tastes a little bit more. The first being if we'd had an entire book before this one where our character, we got to see them living in this fantasy world. And then I could have learned so much more about that place because what's going on in that place matters, but you just don't really have the time in this story to really get to know all of the complexities of their culture, of the magic, of the relationships between different peoples. You don't have that much time to explore those things. And so it's almost like we don't get to dive as deep as I would have wanted. And we would have had we gotten a previous book where she's living there and then this book almost could have served as a sequel or the fantasy location could have just not been in the story. We could have still had magic or we could have not had the magic at all. And I think the story could have still been really cool. It was just, I thought, kind of almost like two different stories or a sequel that I had to jump into. There's also a split timeline, which I think also contributed. Physically, the character is going back and forth between places, but then the story is going back and forth in locations and time. So it just was not that it was poorly executed. It just wasn't executed in a way that was 
what I was hoping for. Those are all my unhaul books. Let me know if you've read and loved any of these, if you've been lukewarm, if you also are gonna take any of the same books in, or if there are any books that you picked up this particular quarter that didn't quite work for you, or maybe you're trying to get a new edition. But either way, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you all later. Bye.